<clears throat> Hi everyone. So this is going to be a brief introduction of how we can integrate Adlerian therapy, aka Adlerian theory, also known as individual psychology, to help with career and work development. So give me a second to share my screen. So again, we are going to talk about Adlerian theory and work. And <clears throat> this is not a complete overview of Adlerian theory. I have a few videos already on YouTube about individual psychology. This is specifically going to take one of the life spheres, uh, the world of work, and talk about strategies we can use to help when we're feeling really stuck. Because it's easy, as I'll talk about in a few slides, to feel really kind of overwhelmed and discouraged and feeling stagnant when it comes to kind of accomplishing our career and work goals. So to give some context, again, this is greatly based off Alfred Adler's work. So for those that don't know, Alfred Adler was an Austrian medical doctor uh, in the early 20th century. And he started off um, working with Sigmund Freud, who was a pioneer of psychoanalysis, psychoanalysis. And Freud and Adler had a falling out, particularly against the theory of sexuality. Adler did not specifically think everything was motivated by sex. Uh, Adler had a model more geared towards motivated by power or the will to power, essentially that we're motivated to accomplish some sort of life goals rather than specifically be related to some sort of sexual hangups we had from our childhood. Uh, so Adler was one of the first to really defect from Freud. Uh, Carl Jung is probably the most famous, um, but Adler again was one of the first to do that. And Adler's model essentially really emphasizes that all behavior is purposeful. So <clears throat> no matter what we do, there is some sort of intent to it. And Adler's model of the unconscious, rather than being very complex as uh, Freud's, you know, and as well as Jung's, Adler's model essentially, there is no model, but he argues that anything that's outside of our awareness is unconscious. So we are motivated by things we're not aware of, and those things are motivated by some sort of life goals that we're trying to master. So those life goals come from what we call the life spheres. Adler wrote about three areas. Um, Post-Adlerians added a few after that, but mainly the three areas that Adler talked about that we're trying to, to master is the area of love, work, and friendship. So for this kind of lecture here, we're going to focus on the world of work. So really, <clears throat> to understand uh, Adlerian theory very quickly, similar, it is a psychodynamic, meaning that our personality is greatly influenced from our childhood and past development. So Adler really focused on not just you know, what's going internally as the child develops, but what's going on externally. In other words, what's going on in the environment, the family, as well as society at that time. Because what starts to happen is <clears throat> at an early age, we learn we're not good at everything and that we have some sort of limitations. And those limitations can kind of motivate us to achieve a certain goal. And again, sometimes those motivations we're just not aware of. But many times from this model, we're trying to overcome a limitation from our past through one of these life spheres. So work is no different. Sometimes we're striving to work in some sort of area to kind of either make up for something that happened in the past or to overcome a limitation because if we're overcoming a limitation, that's how we grow and develop. So with all that though, what's nice about the Adlerian theory is it gives us an understanding of why developing our career can be so daunting and scary. So, <clears throat> Some of us, because again, we're all gonna have unique experiences and personalities. Some people are gonna find the challenge of career, dev career development as exciting and energizing. And while others may feel stuck and discouraged. So going forward, some of these suggestions are really geared towards those individuals who are feeling stuck and, and discouraged when it comes to developing the work sphere. So in a nutshell, Adlerian theory is essentially motivated to promote some sort of growth and development, and how it views growth and development is by viewing stagnation and discouragement as a limitation. 
So therefore, if we can change stagnation and discouragement, we're gonna help continue on the path of accomplishing our life goals. So if we're feeling stagnant, then we wanna foster movement. That's more, uh, I guess another way of saying that is we wanna promote action. And if we're feeling discouraged, we wanna promote feeling courageous, feeling like we can complete those actions. So if we can have those perceptions that we feel like we can do this, as well as those actions, that's most likely gonna allow us to take steps to accomplish goals. So related to that, as I just talked on the last slide, we have two kind of dynamics going. We have behavior and then we have thoughts. Now Adler wrote about his theories before the proliferation of cognitive behavioral therapy in the Western world. But when we read Adler, we see that his view of uh, certain ideas really resonates now with modern cognitive behavioral therapy. Rather than using cognition or thoughts, Adler used the term private logic. And what private logic means is, again, what's unique about human being is not only do we have an objective reality, but we also have a subjective reality. Fancy way of all that means essentially is if we're in a room with people and something happens, there's going to be, everyone's going to have a possible different perception of that event. So essentially the thing to remember is everyone's going to have a unique perception of the world, the universe themselves and others. So in order to promote growth and change, it can be helpful to understanding our private logic. So again, relating it back to the world of work. We're all going to have unique private logics based off our past experiences and our perceptions of the world. So when it comes to the world of work and we're, when we're feeling stuck and discouraged, it can be helpful to really explore our thoughts related to that. Maybe the discouragement is related to a thought that we're just not good enough or we can't achieve it. Or maybe it's not necessarily about us, but we're viewing the world in such a chaotic mess that we're just being nihilistic in response to the chaos. So understanding not only our perceptions of ourselves, but also how we feel that others perceive us and also how we perceive the universe entirely relates to our work and career. Again, if we're feeling like we don't have hope, then it can definitely impact uh, our striving to develop our work self. So <clears throat> with that, we can really promote kind of the, the stagnation to movement and also changing our perceptions to feel more courageous by exploring our strengths. So after we explored our internal perceptions of things, now we wanna use and explore our strengths to help us accomplish our goals. So <clears throat> Adlerian theory takes a very holistic perspective. Again, everyone's gonna have limitations and everyone's gonna have strengths. And what we see time and time again is that many of us are going to use our strengths to compensate for our limitations to help achieve our goals. That was re really inspired Adler. So Adler was a medical doctor before exploring the world of psychiatry and psychoanalysis. And Adler was really interested in when people had some sort of ailment or disability and how they overcame it. Uh, in the time period, there was a lot of examples of uh, artists who uh, had limitations with vision, but use those limitations to create masterful art. You know, we have uh, Beethoven who was losing his hearing, but then through that composition still worked with music. Uh, Adler also worked a lot with um, traveling circuses and saw trapeze artists. And it was a common trend that many of the trapeze artists and individuals in the circus tend to have been raised or born with some sort of limitation, whether feeling weak or had some sort of injury as a kid, and they overcame that injury to develop who they were as a person. So really the big motivation is no matter what limitations we have, we can develop our strengths as well to help overcome or work in aid to those limitations. So how we can apply this to career, Knowing our strengths can be translated to career development. So if we know who we are, that can help us with career decisions. We know our likes, our interests, as also our capabilities and strengths. 
Understanding this, we can also describe this to others, whether it's through resume, through interviews, or personal branding. In addition to this, because Adler had a massive view of the importance of social development, that we can also use our strengths to help build community. Now, in the world of career development, we're going to get a term networking, where essentially we know that um, because of the chaos and just the complexity of work, it can really be helpful to have others to assist us in that path. In addition to that, too, um, Adler really view a strong purpose of human development was to get to a point where you are not motivated just personally, but you're also motivated to help others and to give back to society. So we can use our strengths through the world of work to help develop and improve society. To kind of jump off to a tangent real quick, one way I view career counseling and career development is that career is essentially the interaction between the individual and society. Therefore, using Adlerian theory, if we have the strengths from the individual, those individual interacts with society and then also can transform not only themselves, but since society as well. And then through that whole process, again, if we're doing activities um, that develop our strengths and also help us overcome our limitations, this can also help us engage in activities that promote meaning and purpose. Again, this all comes back from Adler's work in the early days of development of psychoanalysis. Adler saw that many people had meaning by overcoming those limitations from childhood. And so their life had some sort of direction and purpose. <clears throat> so how can we understand our strengths? Well, one common way is just kind of reflecting on what are our possible strengths. Here's some strength-based questions. So think of something that you've enjoyed doing in the past. What was it? How would you describe it? Um, and related to that too, again, our development of personality and understanding ourselves not only is from our own experiences, but how we think others perceive us. Therefore, it can be helpful to share a time when someone complimented you. What did they say? What was the context? How did you make you feel? Again, if career is the interaction between society and the individual, also understanding how others people perceive our strengths can also help us uh, have a more holistic view of our possible personality and contributions to others. And finally, describe a time you solved a problem. How did you solve that problem? What strengths were utilized? And overall, what was it like that entire process? So in addition to just reflecting on those questions, again, something I did not include in the slide, but I think is relevant is we also are going to learn by experiencing something. And I'm going to get more into this in a few slides later, but really the, the thing to take away from this is we need to promote action. By doing stuff, we will learn more about who we are including our limitations, but also our strengths. And in those what we call crucible moments, those experiential moments, it allows us to develop those strengths and also increase our self-knowledge. So in relate to that, let's say we have someone who just really is struggling understanding their strengths. You ask them to describe themselves, they just have a really hard time. And again, this is kind of common, especially individuals who are seeking out counseling and career counseling. Uh, so what we can use is an Adlerian technique. And this also was greatly developed further by uh, Mark Savickas for his career construction interview. But essentially, <clears throat> we would take the role model question and we would ask someone, how would you describe a childhood role model? to someone who did not know who that role model was. So the one caveat is typically this is a role model who someone was not living with. The reason why that is, it's because as a child, we tend to not have the ability to choose who we live with, but we do have the ability to choose our role models outside of the home. So how someone describes this role model, let's say it's an athlete or a teacher, or a musician, whatever it may be, how to describe the characteristics of that person essentially reflects 
elements of who the individual is. So again, who you select as a role model and describe those traits in theory, you're also describing traits you possess. Because again, we picked role models to emulate and we internalized those traits, and those characteristics. And again, this is kind of a way to build an understanding of a Larian view of the unconscious. These, all these questions are kind of out our typical awareness, and it can be really powerful reflecting on this, especially for someone who feels they don't have many strengths. <clears throat> so, in addition to that, we may get to a point where we feel like, okay, I have strengths, but there are certain strengths I don't particularly have, so what do I do in those circumstances? Well, what's great with the Adlerian model is we can develop strengths by acting as if we already have them. So it can be similar to the common motif, especially in US culture, of fake it till you make it, okay? So let me go a little further what I mean by this. So again, big theme, it is very easy to feel discouraged and just overwhelmed, and especially in today's society with just the chaos and unpredictability and all the unknown. So it's easy to kind of just feel paralysis by analysis. Yeah, in order to grow, we need to move. In order to move, we must have courage. Therefore, acting as if we have courage allows us to take action, which leads to accomplishing our goals. I will admit it is easier to say than do. So another way though that I kind of understood this is Rather than telling someone act as if, you know, you already have this strength or act as if you're not depressed or if you're happy. Another probably more ingestible understanding is in times of stagnation, it's very easy to be in a pattern of consuming. So when we're feeling overwhelmed, depressed, anxious, it's very easy to sit on the couch, scroll through social media, binge numerous amounts of shows through streaming services, and sit and eat ice cream and, you know, Frito chips and junk food all we can. We're just consuming and just consuming, okay? That's stagnation. However, in order to grow and achieve our goals, we're going to need more creation than consumption. So what that would look like, okay? In those times we're sitting there consuming information, consuming entertainment, we want to add just a few moments in time where we're creating something. It could be journaling. It could be cooking something, cooking a meal, creating food for others, maybe, or yourself. It could be drawing. It could be painting. It could be planting a garden. It could be croqueting. It could be knitting. It could be even listening to music and then dancing while listening to music because we're creating a dance. So all those tiny steps can accumulate to more action. So in those moments, just having the awareness of sitting there and realizing, wow, I've been on my phone for two hours, taking a break, maybe doing a puzzle. You know, again, maybe go make some sort of tea, whatever it may be, the idea of well, we can add more creation than consumption to our lives, that's going to help promote kind of movement and courageousness. In addition, by exploring uh, those activities, we're gonna learn more about ourselves. We may find we really enjoy cooking or we don't, but we'd rather be crocheting or knitting or you know painting, whatever it may be. That exploration, exploration is gonna allow us to kind of develop who we are and feel more courageous and feel less stagnant. So again, rather than maybe saying acting as if something, we can go for, okay, what can I create today and balance out all the consumption that I'm doing? So hopefully that makes sense. And to provide a quick summary, it is easy to feel discouraged and stagnant when it comes to our own work sphere of life. Using the Adlerian framework, the idea is, okay, how can we take that stagnation and move it to movement, how can we feel, take that discouragement and put it to courageous? So we can 
explore that by our private logic, exploring our own thoughts, assumptions, and beliefs in ourselves, how others view ourselves, as well as how we view others in the world. We can do that by exploring our strengths, our role models, people we're inspired to be, our past experiences. And then finally, what we can also do is by to promote movement, we can also focus on creation rather than consumption. Okay, so that's the end. And I'm sure I'll have some more videos coming forward, uh, adding more in depth about Adlerian theory uh, going forward. So thank you, I'm gonna stop sharing <clears throat> and have a good rest of your day.